Hello, hello, grade 11. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at Newton's law, exam questions, approach, and let's see the questions that we got. Ra. So here we have the diagram below shows a rope and a pulley system of a device being used to lift a 122.5 kg container upwards at a constant velocity. So we highlight the key weight there, constant velocity. Assume that the ropes are light and inextensible and the pulley is frictionless. Now 2.1 says calculate the weight of the container. So now you will remember to calculate the weight of the container. We have the formula Fg is equals to the mass times the gravitational acceleration. Now what is the mass? We say the mass is 1 to 2.5 and the gravitational acceleration is 9.8. Now multiplying that with your calculator, you have 1,200.5 newtons. So don't forget the SI unit for your gravitational force. That's newtons, right? Then um, let's move along. 2.2 says the system is moving upwards at a constant velocity as indicated above. Then draw a vector diagram of all forces acting on the container and indicate the angles represented in the diagram, right? So now, remember we have the key weight there. It's moving upward at constant velocity. But as a physical science learner, constant velocity is not just a weight. It's a key word to you, right? Which tells us that the system is at equilibrium, right? So if now we know that the system is at equilibrium, what does it tell us about the forces? The forces are what? Are balanced, right? Now there's a certain vector diagram that we draw when we know that our system is at equilibrium. We call that vector diagram a closed vector diagram. So this is what we are going to draw here we've been given our our forces and their respective angles in which they've been acted upon then let's use that to draw our closed vector diagram so remember with the closed vector diagram you draw your forces exactly as they appear so now we have t1 which has been acted in that direction right at an angle of 30 degrees then we have t2 which has been acted in that direction so we are using our tail to head method to draw the closed vector diagram remember we tail to head start with the tail to the head tail to the head and then tail to the head right so that's t1 that's t2 and that's gravitational force so the angles we have here 30 degrees and then 60 degrees then obviously we know here since this is a closed vector diagram we must have that 90 degrees opposite the hypotenuse side now where do we get this fg here remember this is the one that we calculated in 2.1 which comes from the force that is experienced by the contain so the container remember is experiencing the gravitational force due to its mass and its gravitational acceleration on earth right so we have all those three forces making up our closed vector diagram like that so exactly as they are t1 acting in that way at an angle of 30 degrees then t2 that way at an angle of 60 degrees then we also have fg acting downward um like that so now let's move along let's move along we have 2.2.2 says determine the magnitudes of the forces t1 and t2 so now you can see that t1 is this rope here but the force is really exited in this direction upward then t2 is also being pulled by this rope downward here but the force is exerted that way now we are asked to calculate or to determine the magnitude of the forces t1 and t2 remember now we have the closed vector diagram like that right now you will remember that 
if you have a closed vector diagram like this you can use your trig ratios in order to calculate using your maths you know that if you can use the trig ratio sine sine theta is the same as your opposite side over your hypotenuse side so in this case if you are looking for t1 you can just look for the angle that is opposite t1 then that's 60 degrees so you say opposite from that angle you just reference from that angle you say opposite is t1 and the hypotenuse will be um, fg so now let's try that using our sine theta so this is sine theta equals to opposite over hypotenuse now our opposite side is the one that we are looking for t1 then our hypotenuse side is obviously fg right which let's just substitute it to be 1002.5 because we calculated it in the previous question then sine the angle is 60 degrees now if we can just cross multiply the two here so we have 1200.5 multiplied by sine 60 that gives us 1039.66 newtons so now you have the value for t1 now let's look for the value for t2 also again we can use our sine um, our trig ratio sine then t2 what is the angle that is opposite t2 we have 30 degrees so if we reference from this angle 30 degrees we say the opposite side is t2 and the hypotenuse is obviously again your fg right your weight then um we have sine theta is equals to opposite over the hypotenuse side the opposite being the one we are looking for which is now t2 then now here we have sine 30 degrees over the hypotenuse 1002.5 remember your hypotenuse is fg and we've already calculated that then um cross multiply here if you cross multiply here we have our value for t2 is 600.25 newtons right so you punch that in your calculator it gives you that solution then that's it for that's it for 2.2.2 let's go for 2.3 it says the system is moving upwards at a constant velocity at a constant velocity 2.3.1 says what does the statement above tell us about the forces acting on the contain so when you see the word constant velocity what does it tell you about the forces acting on that particular object so for 2.3.1 for 2.3.1 we know when we see the word constant velocity what it tells us about our forces that the forces are balanced right the forces are balanced so if the forces are balanced we know that our f net is equal to zero newtons why because our opposite forces will be the same right so they will eventually cancel out giving us the net resultant force to be zero newtons then let's go for 2.3.2 um we have which newton's law supports your answer in question 2.3.1 so the fact that we are saying f net is equal to zero the forces are balanced what law supports that we say it's newton's newton's first law now what does newton first law says it says an object will remain stationary or in a state of constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts upon it unless an unbalanced force or external force or a non-zero force acts upon it so we can see that our statement has been saying the object is moving at constant velocity so that means this object will remain moving at that constant velocity unless now an unbalanced force acts upon it right so that's newton's first law 
and that's it for this question medat medat yeah see you next time